Live from the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the season premiere of the Velazquez Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. I'm Dave Ridenour, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and we got a great night for you live at Doc's Irish Pub in Boyertown, PA. Well, as our normal custom, we uh, take a quick break, and we come back. Coach Mick and I are going to look at all the high school action that's happened last week and look at some of the things that are coming in the weeks to come. So buckle down. If you're in the area, Doc, stop over, and have a drink, and say hello. We'll be right back with more right Tune after this. For more Monday morning quarterback right after this. Yeah. At Flahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Flahost Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Back at Doc's Irish Pub for our live season premiere of the Vlahos Dunn Shorts Monday Morning Quarterback Dave Ryan. Now again, joined by my co-host uh, for many, many years and a long time, St. Pius the 10th football coach Jim Mick. Coach, we got a beautiful night here to start our uh, to kick off our year and uh, start our show, and it's great to see you. Um, how you doing? Well, the only time I see you is during football season. I don't see you on the golf course much anymore. You must not be playing a lot. But uh, it's always great to come back and, and talk about high school football because it's dear to both of our hearts. Absolutely. Well, I can't play in those big money matches that you and you guys <laughs> play, and that's why I don't get invited to play on your normal Wednesday group. But, Coach, it's, it's been great. Uh, you know, we've had a couple of weeks now. They're getting started up a little bit earlier, and, and uh, we've had three weeks of like, local high school football. And uh, before we get started, Coach, let's look at our top five. Uh, we got the Reinhardt Paint top five. We want to thank uh, Ronnie and Keith Reinhardt again this year for, for helping us out here on the show. And, and uh, what we have uh, is number one at Pottsgrove. Pottsgrove is 3-0 and with a, a good start to the year. Rick Pennypacker in his 29th year doing a great job. We got PV at 2-1, and one, suffered a tough loss to Penridge, but still pretty solid group. We got PJP, 3-0. Uh, and o. We got Owen J. Roberts at 3-0. and o. And we got Upper Park at 2-1. and one. They rounds up our top five for the, uh, for the first week. And, again, we want to thank the Reinhardt boys for helping us out with that. Coach, let's talk a little bit about Pottsgrove and Boyertown. Uh, it's a game that featured two of our local squads. You know, now they're in that non-league uh, portion of their schedule. Where they play four games before they get into the actual league play. And at least there were two teams that were playing, even though it was a non-conference game. Pottsgrove was able to knock off Boyertown 49-14. But Boyertown gave them a good run that first half and hung in there with them, then sort of ran out of gas. Well, Pottsgrove fell behind uh, initially. Uh, it's 21-14 at halftime, Pottsgrove. But you know what? As you look at that game, 
And there's a lot to be said about Border Town's effort because they are in a transition phase right now. New coach, new staff, the players, they don't have a lot of players. I was at one of their scrimmages. They came out on the field with about 40 players. Can you imagine a school the size of Border Town? But they've gone a couple years without the, the middle school programs, and it's going to take T.J. Miller a couple years to get that program going. But he has them playing hard, and that's all important. Well, and they certainly, they certainly do have a couple athletes. Jerry Cap has been a guy who's been a two-way star in the uh, Pac-10, which is now the Pioneer Athletic Conference. Uh, Marcus Thomas is a solid, solid kid as a running back position. And I like this little Aiden Mathias as the quarterback, Jim. I know they've been sort of putting Cap and Mathias in their quarterback and switching them off. I, I sort of like Mathias and what he did. He uh, threw for 84, uh, 83 yards and scored a touchdown on the ground himself. Aiden Mathias, I saw him in a scrimmage early, and I saw Cap. And I certainly know what uh, type of athlete the Cap is because he's a very good all-around athlete, especially in basketball. And they were alternating the two of them at quarterback. I would think now that their best thing to do, and I agree with you, I would take Cap and put him out as a wide receiver because he's 6'3", 6'4". You are either going to have to double him or play him with a man and a half and let the Matthias kid run the offense, run that midline offense, and get experience doing it. Stop alternating. I Play agree. one guy. I agree with that. Matthias is an underclassman. He is a junior, so he certainly has another year to get better as well. But uh, I'm hoping that Coach Miller decides on a quarterback. They always said the adage was if you have two, you have none. Uh, it's better to have just one, one solid kid with there. Potsgrove, obviously, we know Rashul Faison has been a kid who was a super player last year, over 2,200 yards, and he looks like he's on track again. Uh, but I was impressed with the young quarterback, Cisco. I saw him play against Methacton, and it was a very lopsided game. But Cisco impressed me. He ran the option real well and threw the ball when he needed to. Well, first of all, to get back about Boyertown Potsgrove matchup, Potsgrove is just physically much stronger than, than Boyertown. They've got a great weight program, and their physicality is above and beyond Boyertown at this point in time. So that took over naturally in the second half. And you know a Rick Pennypacker coach team is always going to have an offensive line. And we can talk about Faison all night, but that offensive line is what opens up the holes for Faison and, and gives him the yardage and the touchdowns, etc., that he needs in order for Potsgrove to win. They got a great ball club. They do, and they have a good, solid defense. Uh, obviously, he takes a lot of pride in that as well, uh, in the defense. But again, you know, Rick Pennypacker does coach the offensive line, so that is his uh, bread and butter. But another big win for Potsgrove. They're three and zero and sitting on top of our top five. Now, another team that's really started off well this year for the first time in years is Owen J. Roberts. They started out at three and zero. Uh, they played an old rival of theirs, which was uh, Henderson, Westchester Henderson it was. Now it's simply Henderson High School. Uh, and, and we're able to knock them off 26-14. Well, I remember what Coach Kolka said in the, in the newspaper clip, that uh, they were a little confused early with Henderson's offense because it was the midline veer option. And that can cause problems till you get accustomed to what they're doing. But they did. They got a stout defense, strong defense, O and J, plus a run game. And you know me, I think the two key things in a football program are having a solid defense and a solid run game, and then throw the pass in a little bit later on. Well, they had 211 yards on the ground. Uh, Billy Scherfel, again, a very serviceable kid. Uh, he's a hard-nosed kid. He plays hard. But I like that Prowecki. Uh, you know, we talked about him last year. He's a good athlete. He catches the ball. He also runs the ball. He had a TD both on the ground and in the air. He iced the game with a 31-yard touchdown run in the, third, in the fourth quarter. And uh, I coached his dad, so... If he's as tough as the old man, he's a good football player, <laughs> let me tell you. Well, those old guys from Phoenixville were pretty yeah. tough back in those days, and they used to find their way to Pius somehow, Coach. Yeah. That was another one on your recruiting yeah. trips to Come up 724. Yeah, there you go. But, you know, Dawson Stewart is a kid who really has a lot of 
uh, expectation on him. You know, he's a quarterback. He's a big kid. He's 6'5". He's, he's really athletic looking. He plays very well on the defensive side of the ball. But if he can come around, he threw uh, 12 for 20 for 125. He did throw a pick, though, Jim. Uh, if he could come around, Owen Jay might make some noise this year. Well, how long has he been around? I know. It seems I like mean, forever. it seems like he's been playing for five years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he is a solid athlete. He's got good size. He's got good strength. He's a basketball player. So any improvement he shows is certainly going to help Owen Jay get over that hump and, and create some uh, competition in that Liberty Division. All right, and, in, and the next game is the one that we were at, the PCTV Network. Uh, Scotty Furman and myself were there as they renewed the lights at Pottstown at Grigg Memorial, which was a great night for all the fans in the, in the community. There were a lot of people out. We had an opportunity to talk to uh, State Senator Mensch and all the people that were uh, involved, Peggy, uh, Polly Wind and, and John Armada and, uh, and the whole light. Uh, unfortunately, the Trojans had a tough night. Bishop Shanahan is a solid, solid football squad, and we're able to knock them off 35-7. to well, I've been around Pottstown a long time, and to see the lights disappear at Pottstown, and you remember it more than I do, but I remember back in the early 60s, there was always a Friday night football game at Pottstown. It was part of the community, and for those people that had a lot to do with bringing the lights back to Pottstown, congratulations. You deserve a lot of kudos, and I think the fans are going to come back out, and, and just hopefully we can get the Pottstown program going. Uh, as I said before, Defense and rush offense are the things you got to start with. And Pottstown has given up a lot of points. They only rushed for 29 yards, and you can't. You got to. You got to. You got to control the ball and keep into the game as long as possible. You know that. Everybody well, wants to speed it up. Sometimes you right. got to slow it yeah. up. Well, you know, what also would help, I think, Jim, if they get some continuity in the coaching well, ranks. You know, they've changed head coaches. Now they're on their third head coach in the last five years. And, and, uh, and those kids need some consistency. And they need to have a, a head coach come in there with a good staff and hang around for a while. And hopefully that'll be the case at Pottstown. But as you mentioned, Jamal Adams was a, a bright spot. He and, and Nehemiah Figueroa were two kids that really stood out as bright spots for Pottstown. Figueroa did a nice job out of the secondary. Adams on both sides of the ball. But as you mentioned, they only had 80 total yards, Jim, and most of that came in the second half. You're not going to win. You're not going to win doing that, and you're not going to win naturally giving up 35 points. The Pottstown program has just got to hang in there, be tough, be dedicated, get in the weight room. And eventually, and as we both said, you can't. The seniors have had three coaches in three yeah, years. Yeah, it's no not good. good. No not good. good at all. Well, you know, Pope John Paul is another uh, squad. Has really came on strong the second half of last year. Rory Graver and his gang did a nice job down there. They finished strong. Uh, they're starting off the best start in school history. They're three and zero with an overtime win, 21-20 over Chichester. Great win. They're up 3-0. and Great for PJP Panthers. And you know what? They have one of the best quarterbacks, I think, in the Pac-10, or in the Pac-12, in Matt DeLorenos. He, he, he's, he's tall. He's rangy. He can run. He throws accurately. Plus, he's got some people to throw to in Dan Serino and Jake Bilstein and uh, Gunther uh, George, etc. He's got some, he got some players he can go to. I think the problem that they may ensue later on is offensive line. The offensive line got to get better, got to hold up if they're going to continue to win. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, Coach Graver said, which I think was a good point, they, they won an ugly game. They didn't play their best. They had a bunch of turnovers, but they were able to overcome all that and, and win a tough game against a Chichester team. It's very athletic, and I have written down here, they must become more consistent with the run game as well, and that all starts up front. But their, ba their, their balance between the run and pass was pretty good. They rushed for 109 yards and passed for 153 yards. So that balance was pretty good. Well, Coach and I, if you ever notice that we're, we're doing this or doing that, there, there are some bugs out here, right? All of a sudden they came out of nowhere, yeah. and we must smell yeah. good, Coach, because yeah. they're, they're attacking us. But we're going to hang in there, and we're going to do the best we can as well. Now, another one, PV, who came off a great, great season last year. Robbie Heist, in his first year, did a heck of a job uh, following up with Scotty Reed, really started at uh, Perkyom and Valley. They started off like a house on fire, 2-0, but they ran into a really, really solid squad in Penn Ridge and got shut out, 29-6. And beat a couple good teams in those first yep. two weeks. Yep. They didn't beat any Sisters of the Sick. They beat a couple good teams. And 
it's it's very difficult to see them dominate it and shut out because they can put points on the board, but they got off, according to what Coach Heiss said, they got off to a bad uh, start. They they had their back to the to the goal line the entire time, and it just was a bad start for them. And, and things unfolded, which they weren't looking forward to happening. Okay, Coach. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick time out. We're going to get some bug spray out here, and you and I will get our, our water. But we're going to have some more fun over here live at Doc's Irish Pub in Boyertown, right next to the legendary Zerns Market on Philadelphia Avenue. Coach and I will be right back after these words from our sponsors. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterbacks right after this. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243. 800-222-0243 or online at fredbeans.com. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service, Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. Here live at Doc's Irish Pub in Boyertown, PA, the Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Dave Ridenauer and former head coach at St. Pius, Jim Mick, and I are breaking down all the action from the last couple of weeks, last week in particular. You know, Coach Tommy Hans has, has struggled to get his things going over there at Upper Perk, but they started off real well this year with a big 2-0 uh, record, and they ran into a very, very tough squad year in and year out. Upper Moreland has a solid, solid football team. <laughs> well, we don't usually bring up the opposing players, especially when they're not from our area. But they have a kid down at Upper Moreland by the name of Sterling Barr. He ran back the opening kickoff for 96 yards. He also intercepted and returned a, a, an interception 97 yards to put them up 21-7 at half. Sterling Bar. Bar. Yep. A name to remember. Well, you know, last year, Zeke Coleman really had, did a nice job quarterback in that squad. He had Kaiser. He had Kendra. They had some weapons. They had Tutulio. Uh, they had uh, that wary kid. I thought they were really on the verge of doing something pretty good. This year, they start out 2-0, and but they sort of stumbled a little bit in, in that game against uh, Upper Moreland, losing by 14. But as you mentioned, they sort of dug themselves into a hole. Plus, they had two interceptions and a fumble, which never helps oh, against a solid team. First of all, Tyler Wary may be one of the top three running backs in the league. He was last year. Yeah. He's an outstanding north-south runner. And you also have... Uh, Kendra, Ryan Kendra, yeah. one of the top receivers in the league. Two-way players, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. got solid players back, and they've taken Tyler Kaiser, who was a player last year, wide out, and then they moved him to quarterback. quarterback yeah. And everything seemed to be going very smoothly in the first couple games. But as I said to you, Dave, before the show, the, up, uh, the, the Liberty Division has been dominated by Spring Ford and Perk Valley. Correct. The uh, Pioneer Division has been dominated by Potsgro. I would like to see, just as a football fan, forget the playoffs. I could care less about the playoffs right now. I want to see some good games within the league. I think Upper Perk has a, a shot to go against Potsgrove this year, make it difficult. Absolutely. I think PJP oh, yeah, absolutely. has a shot to go against Potsgrove. They beat them last year. And make things interesting from a league standpoint. Perk Valley, Springford, and Owen Jay, should make it very interesting 
in the other division also. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Okay, and speaking of Springford, now they certainly have had some great years uh, with Chad Brubaker at the helm. Uh, last year, again, was no exception. They had a really uh, good, good football team, but very senior dominated. They had no returning starters from last year's squad. So they have a one and two record, but they're playing some very, very solid teams. You know, they run up against a Wilson squad who comes very highly talented from the Berks County. Uh, Iggy Reynoso, a guy I know that, that you really like, was a, a big player in that game. But they come up a little bit short the second year in a row against a solid, solid Wilson team. Well, first of all, no excuses. Chad Brubaker doesn't want any excuses. But last year, they, sc they scored over 500 points as an offense. Rush for, yeah. Rush I mean, yeah, yeah, and they were the best defense in the league, giving up something like 12 points a game. Right. They lost a kit and caboodle yeah, amount of kids, they did. big time loss of players. But that's no excuse. They, outside of a couple things, and I know stats are for math majors, not right. for football coaches. But uh, Springford was 342 total yards to Wilson's 278, and they lost the game for one reason in my mind, poor tackle. They had, they had Renoso, and give Renoso credit. He is a very good back. But in the fourth quarter with the game tied, they had him tackled. I thought he was going to the ground. He shook loose, scored at a great speed, reversed his field, took it in winning touchdown, but a great football game. Well, and again, it's, the season's certainly not over for Spring 4 to have a bunch no. of good games uh, this week at Exeter, but T.J. Pergine is certainly a guy that most people know. He's a, one of the top quarterbacks in, in our area and in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, he had a great year last year, and he's building on that. And this little D. Francesco, you and I liked him last year. He's a tough little guy, and he's back at that running back position, but he gives you that dual threat, running the ball and then also catching it out of the backfield. Very good. He's a multi-type player, and he also plays cornerback a lot on defense and he's a good little corner so you got to get him on the get your best players on the field TJ Pergine reminds me of Brett Farr he's a gunslinger he throws the ball the velocity is unbelievable on his he's a little sidearm is he's, he's not a picture thrower but his speed on the ball is outstanding he's a strong kid he can break tackles etc he was 23 out of 34 for 278 yards. And he's got some young receivers that are going to get better as the season goes on. Yeah, he certainly are. You know, Coach, uh, there are a couple other teams. Norristown, we want to say congratulations to Coach Powell. They won their first game 10-9 to 9 over Plymouth White Marsh and, and uh, Phoenixville and, and Upper Marion in the gang. Still, still struggling a little bit, and hopefully they're going to get on the winning side of the ball. Now, this week uh, when we uh, the PCTV Network, uh, goes out. We're going to go back to Potsgrove to uh, Rick Penny Packer Field as uh, Potsgrove takes on Glenn Mills. So that will be our game of the week. So all you people want to tune in, don't forget to tune in to that. It'll be Potsgrove and Glenn Mills. That should be an interesting ball game, Coach. You know, Potsgrove with their athleticism, Glenn Mills always a big, strong, tough team. Well, I, I think this is Potsgrove's year to, to really go after the, the playoffs. I don't want to talk about them now, and I'm sure Coach Penny Packer doesn't either. But I think they got all the material to get things done. They got a running game. They're always good defense. They got a solid offensive line. And they got some kids that can catch the ball. Well, you know, there's a couple other games. Uh, obviously, uh, Exeter and Springford should be a good one. Exeter, again, a very solid club up there in Berks County, uh, where Chad uh, had come from when he was at Wilson uh, West Lawn. He knows a lot of the people up there. So they will play Springford. Springford looking to rebound from a tough loss. These young kids have to get old in a hurry. Well, they got a quarterback tailback tandem up there in Exeter, plus a returning offensive line that is very, very big, very strong, and very agile. So it should be a good game. Springford is going to have to continue to improve on both sides of the ball, not turn the ball over, which they didn't do, but stay in the game and, and get a big win. It's a big game for them. It certainly from is. From a 6A standpoint. Okay, so make sure you stay tuned to the PCTV Network. 
for all the games coming up again. We'll be at Pottsgrove on Friday night. Well, Coach, uh, I want to thank you again for stopping by. It's always great talking to you. Our season premiere, we got it under our belts here. A lot more things happen. Another week of non-leagues, then we'll start getting more into the Pioneer Athletic Conference play. He's Jim Mick. I'm Dave Ryan. Now we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I got two of the coaches from the local high schools right here ready to come on board. So we'll be right back. Monday morning quarterback, right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr., call us or visit our website now. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Flahost Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance. And we're in your community. Key Bank, the official bank of the Monday morning quarterback. Hey, we're back here live at Doc's Irish Pub. Vlahos and Dunn Insurance, Monday morning quarterback. And uh, we have a couple of uh, local coaches, some of our senior members of the coaching uh, uh, fraternity, if you will. Rick Pennypacker from Potsgrove in his 29th year. Chad Brubaker in his eighth year at Springford. Guys, first of all, thanks for stopping by and uh, chatting with us here. And uh, Ricky, let's start with you down there on the end. Um, start off pretty solid. At the three and zero, I'm sorry, Rick Penny Packer. It's right. You've always been Ricky to me. I know, anyway, I know. It has been. <laughs> Starting off three and zero. Uh, congratulations on three big wins, and uh, you have to be pretty happy with where you guys are at right now. Well, 
Yeah, I'm glad we're not 0-3, but uh, you know, 3-0, and we haven't really proved anything to me yet. We have to play better football in order to be able to move up the ladder here a little bit. So, yeah, we're okay with 3-0, and but uh, you know, it's a 3-0 and that we have a lot of improvement this, at this part of the year. So if we don't improve, we may be 3-7 and by the end of the year. So. Okay. Well, you heard it here first here. Potsgrove is going to go three and seven, nice. and I'll take anybody's bet on that one right now. <laughs> he, he loves to play that card, but that's okay. That's his game. And Chad Brubaker's done a heck of a job at Springford. Again, this year, sort of a rebuilding year for you, Chad. And I know, as Jim Mick and I talked about earlier, you don't make uh, excuses and, uh, for, for your team. But starting out at one and two, which is certainly a little bit different than what you've done in the past. Um, uh, but I'm sure you've seen improvement. You said the kids played real tough against Wilson. Yeah, I don't know why you have me on. I'm not even. We're not even in the Monday morning quarterback top five. <laughs> but well, you got. I'm trying to. I'm trying to motivate uh, you to do a little better. Thanks, funny. thanks. That's too funny. No, listen. Uh, That's why we, I was a good coach. I can motivate you, Chad. <laughs> That's funny. We played. We played much better on uh, Friday night against Wilson. But I, you know, that it still wasn't good enough. And um, you know, we we've made some corrections each week, and I think we're going to continue. Um, you know, this week making some corrections, and you know, we have a tough opponent. You mentioned earlier Exeter, who's two and zero and has beaten Hempfield and uh, Boyertown. Uh, so it's going to be a challenge. You know, two and two is a lot better than sounds a lot better than one and three. So absolutely. Well, you know, part of the reason why I wanted you guys on tonight, not only the fact that you've always been good to me here on the show, but in, in an interesting uh, conversation. But, you know, we have two guys from each side of the divisions now. The last year was the first year for the two divisions, which was the, the Frontier Division, which is the smaller school, which Rick Penny Packer is a part of. And then the Liberty Division, which is the larger school, which uh, Chad Brubaker and his gang are involved in there. And I know both these guys don't agree on all the different things between that. And I thought we'd get some good conversation about that. I know, Rick, uh, you sort of wanted to see it, uh, the league play as uh, an old school kind of a guy. And I know, Chad, you like this new way of, of, of playing with your big schools your size because you, you really have aspirations for, for playoffs. And, and Rick, let me ask you, after the first year and a half of the, of the two divisions, uh, break it down for me and, and your uh, and, and your observations. Well, it, I understand why we did it. I, I, I understand 100% why we did it. You know, the uh, the big schools need playoff points. They can't get playoff points by playing smaller schools like us. And uh, some of the smaller schools are getting beaten 60 to nothing, 70 to nothing, 35 to nothing at halftime, all that. And so you know, they don't want that. I I understand all that. Not uh, that's not to say I like that. Because personally, I like playing those big schools. I like playing Springford, O and J, and Perk Valley and those schools where I can get those bonus points. Because I know if you beat those schools, you're going to get a, a bonus points. Plus, those schools are going to win seven, eight, nine games a year. So you're going to get those bonus points. So beating Springford or Perk Valley or O and J, you could get 100, 200, 220 points, which would put you right up on the top of the list. So I understand, you know, why, why everyone doesn't want to have that, but. Now, I'm a little selfish on our part of the end, you know, and I know Chad, I know he's selfish too because he has to he has to go out and get big schools to play because if he played all the small schools in the league, he could some maybe go 9-1 and one and not get in the playoffs, you know. So I understand all that, but, you know, I still like that atmosphere of playing, you know, Springford and Boyertown. I love playing all those big schools. Now, you know, uh, Chad, obviously you're on the other side of that coin and, and uh, you know, you enjoyed it last year, a lot of successes. Uh, you know, Perk Valley actually was was able to knock you guys off, but but it still was a great game and a great rivalry. Um, what are your observations on the, on the divisions so far, you know, pros and cons or whatever, however you see it? Well, I think ultimately, at the end of the day, Rick and I agree in the sense that the league's the most important mm -hmm. thing, and that's where you have to start from. But uh, certainly... You know, there were a couple years that we went seven and three and didn't make playoffs. And, and conversely to what Rick said there, he'll never have that issue. You know, he could probably go five and five and still make the playoffs. So that's something that's very, very difficult for us. You know, there was a year, and, and I've always made this argument. In my experience, there was a year way back when, when we lost our quarterback for the first two games, started out the year one and two, got everybody back by the end of the year. We were probably the best. We went, we did make playoffs. We were seven and three. This is at another school. We were seven and three, knocked off uh, probably the number two team in the district, knocked off the number four team in the district, and we're poised to go. We actually, Cameron Artis Payne 
uh, from Auburn, we were playing Harrisburg, and, and had we not missed five field goals, I kid you not, we missed five field goals that day. Mm. If we make one of the five, we win, and we're in the district championship game in District 3. So that's always my, you know, stuff happens in football. Like, most of us don't have, you know, three quality quarterbacks that if someone goes down, you know, you're, you're a play away from losing your quarterback. And, and I just feel like, um, you know, ultimately, if you have those guys by the end of the year and, you, you know, you may not achieve your goal of winning the division or winning a league, but if you can get the playoffs, there's always a shot. And obviously all those things are check boxes on our list. But, um, you know, your goal ultimately, even if you have some hiccups along the way, your goal at the end of the day, if you're healthy going into playoffs, you've got a shot. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I talked to some people, and, and they basically said to me out front, they said, well, they, they feel like this is sort of the end of the Pioneer Athletic Conference because you're not playing so many I games. I disagree with that. I, and I'm not so. saying that's right. That's I'm just right. saying some people have yeah. said that to me. And, and, Rick, I wanted to get your, no. your feelings on so. that because I, I don't think that's the case. But there's that thought out there because yeah. they don't play so many teams. You only play five teams, and it's sort of the end of the, of the conference. Well, no, I don't think it's the end of the conference. I think it's the, uh, the beginning of something new that, that people have to get used to. You know, the, you know, Chessmont has divisions, and uh, the Suburban has divisions, and up in Berks County there's a lot of divisions. I think it's just something new. You know, our, our fans at our place, they're, they're, not, they're not very happy uh, not playing the big schools. They, they want to play those big schools. But, you know, then again, you know, they, they didn't mind they don't mind us getting into the, the district. Play. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, so I, I like Chad said, yeah. you know, you look at, at, I'm a 4A school along with Upper Perk and Pope John Paul, and there's only seven of us in the district one and four of us get in. So right. you can go four and six and possibly get in the playoffs. So yeah. there, there's, there's, no, I think the, I think the league is in good shape. I think that, uh, you know, you're going to have last year. I think we had five or six teams represent the pack in the in the district playoffs. You know, Chad and Perk Valley and us and P PJP and Upper Perk, and I think it's in good shape. I just, you know, it's something new, and it's it's going to take time for everyone to get used to it. Chad, now I know one of the things that they talked about, and and I was at the game Friday night, and uh, the Pottstown stands were, were full with the, the lights and everything. Bishop Shanahan didn't bring a band, and they, they only had maybe a handful of people on the other side. That is an argument that they bring, that the teams that aren't used to playing uh, the Pioneer Athletic teams, they're, they're, they don't have that rivalry, they don't have any knowledge. Uh, the, the, the attendance is down. How do you address that? I don't, think it's, I don't think it's because of not playing a different team. I mean, you can come to our game on Friday night, and we're playing Wilson in the stands. Well, I think that's Packers a little bit teams. of an exception. Well, though. but... Uh, We'll go up to Exeter yeah. this well, week, okay. and it'll be the same thing. Okay. I, and our, I, we played Unionville week one, and the stands were full. I think people come out when the product is good, when the competition is good, and any you know. And if that doesn't happen initially, but you kind of you show people that that that's happening and the product is is good, people are going to come out. I mean, we've had a lot of games within our league where we've gone and it hasn't been very populated. You know, there wasn't a lot yeah, of people I, there. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I think it if games are good if teams are good and the product is good people will come and uh you know if the records match up or whatever you know for whatever whatever the reason might be or um you know our pv game the last two years of oh, pretty yeah. nice crowd yeah, so um I, I think it just depends on that you know and i i think the other thing you know sometimes private schools don't travel very well because their population is lower and uh so that could have been a part yeah. of it on friday night yeah. i don't know yeah. but you know ultimately if uh, you know, Coach Fisher has an opportunity to improve the Pot Pottstown program, and Bishop Shanahan's playing well, and it's week two, and there's a lot of hype around the game. I think people will come out. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, it was. It was a great atmosphere at Pottstown, and I was really proud of the Pottstown community. It was just unfortunate the team did not play very well, and uh, Bishop Shanahan had their way. Now, Rick, one other thing that people have been talking about is the, the lack of numbers. Uh, on football squads and how hard it is to get kids out and to be dedicated. Chad and I actually were talking a little bit about it before we went on air tonight about how the, the numbers, and particularly in certain schools, uh, uh, are decreasing. Uh, how do you address that situation? Our numbers are up this year. Uh, we're, we're close to 50, 55 kids, so I, I'm, we're usually between 45 to 50 in that area, so we're up a little bit. I, I, really, can't, I really can't put my finger on it. You know, some people say that kids don't want to 
uh, you know, played because of parents with concussions and everything. I have not had a parent really tell me the kid doesn't play because of concussions. I just think, honestly, I just think there's too much out there for kids to do. I just think there's, you know, uh, there, there's so many kids that are playing other sports, soccer, cross country, uh, you know, in our school. Uh, I don't know if Chad has that problem, but we have a problem of kids playing one sport. And, you know, they're playing fall baseball. They're playing, you know, they're wrestling year-round. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but they, some kids lift weights for football yeah. year-round, you know. Yeah. And so it's, it's – it's, but we're you – know, I think that um, there's a lot of contributing factors to it. But I, I believe that, you know, we have got to keep promoting the sport and, 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 and stop listening to all the hype about these concussions and everything because, you know, I, I read things over the summer where – you know, the concussion worry about high school sports is, is blown out of proportion compared to college and pro, right. you know? And uh, so I, 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 just, I just feel like we, we have, we hear that these concussion protocol with the NFL and the college players and, and guys are having these, you know, CTE and everything. Well, those guys are, are, are guys who play pro, college pro, pro football, yeah. and you'll tell you for, for 10, 12 years yeah. getting hit, you yeah. know? And so, <clears throat> I don't know, but you know, numbers are down in other schools, I know, we played board town the other night. We were talking about that when we got home. But my gosh, there was, I remember going to board town, there was 75, 80 kids yeah, out. I think yeah. there were 35 kids yeah. out. And that, that's, there's something, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think Chad, winning will bring kids oh, out. Oh, yeah, too. I, I certainly agree with I that. I mean, with Chad, Chad before you know, Chad, Chad came you know, to uh, you, know, you guys have been fortunate. You've had a lot of kids come out. You say it's a little down this year because you did lose a, a big group of, of kids from, from last year. Uh, I, I also think that a lot of kids don't want to pay their dues and play JV ball and stuff. They want to get right out and start on the varsity. If they don't do that, they're not going to go out and play. I mean, I've dealt with that in coaching in, in my career. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, Chad? I think there's a, a little bit of a lot of different things. I th you know, there are there kids in our school that should that I feel should be playing football? Absolutely. I think there's, you know, I, I know that we promote in our football program, we promote multi multi sport athletes and and I know within the community in within the school of Spring Ford, I think all of the coaches promote that. However, you have a lot of uh, kids that are playing travel this, travel that, club this, club that, and those people aren't high school coaches. They're they're people that have created a team. Um, and I think a lot of them are, are telling kids the wrong things, quite honestly. I mean, if you, if you want to go down, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, everything should be based on research. And research shows that multi-sport athletes have a lower incidence of getting uh, hurt. Um, there's a lot of sports out there that actually, there's a couple sports that have a higher incidence of concussions if you want to go that route. Um, kids are having Tommy John surgery at the age of 17. Kids are tearing ACLs because they're playing the same sport over and over. And, um, you know, I think it's a lot of that. The other thing with, with football, and we are down a little bit, um, it's a big commitment. Yeah. And um, we're, asking, we're asking kids to be accountable, and, and we have expectations, and certain kids can't uphold that, and, and that's fine. Um, but it's not for them. So there's, there's you know, football's a little bit different. Football and wrestling, mm -hmm. I think, are a little bit different. The off-seasons aren't about, you know, throwing the ball around or tossing the ball and going to play games and five on five and this and that and three on three football the off seasons are about getting stronger yeah, yeah. and the same with wrestling it's a it, so those sports i think have seen a little bit of a decline i saw a report though um youth sports are on the decline across the board and football's not the uh highest decrease it's actually a lot of sports uh, i think soccer's down uh, in youth sports, believe it or not, more than football across the country. And I think it's, again, the, the article that I read was largely about high costs and the expectation that we're going to travel to this place and stay in a hotel all weekend yeah. and parents can't yeah. afford it. I know. And well, some of that stuff is just mm -mm. ridiculous. And, I, and, of course, some of those guys are out to make some money, too, in sure. those AAUs and travel teams and things. And it's actually their job, their occupation. So I agree that a lot of times they don't always have the best uh, of heart of interest for, for each kid. Now, let's talk a little bit about the rest of the, se uh, the, rest of the year now for you guys before we say goodnight and uh, before we let you go here. Rick, uh, obviously you have a, a big game coming up with Glenn Mills, and then you have your, your uh, leg play. You talked about the improvement of upper press 
Kirk and the improvement of Pope John Paul. Uh, and of course, Phoenixville, uh, Pottstown and, and Upper Marion for you guys. So I'm sure you're, you're looking to improve and, and what areas, uh, you know, would you like to see that improvement? You talked a little bit about it earlier. Uh, every area, Dave. There's not one area that we're playing well right now. You know, we, 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 we think we're doing, our kids get a false sense of security right now, you know, that oh, we score this many points, that many points, but I watch film and I'm telling you, they're not going to score that many points against Lynn Mills, they're not going to score that many points against a good football team. So it's hard for, it's been hard for us to keep our kids focused, but I think, you know, I'm impressed with our skill kids. We have some, we have some kids that are very, very talented, um, you know, Faison, Austin, Baldwin, you know, Delp, all those guys. Are How about just, your quarterback? Are you happy quarterback, with him? I'm very happy with Good. him. You know, he's throwing the ball. He, I don't know the last time we had a kid that threw for four touchdowns and 160 yards. Yeah. So we, you know, we've never had that. But, you know, he's been getting better every day. But, you know, our, our offensive line is where I am. You know, I'm the most critical. I coach those guys, and I think they're, their fundamentals are not where I want them. And they're, if they don't get there soon, they're not going to be able to be successful. But they're... Yeah, I think our defense is, is pretty good. They fly around the ball. Well. Yeah, they're, front, they're playing. They've they, they, well, they yeah. run around. You know, I, I thought, I thought at West Catholic, not many people saw that game, but they were just athletes all over the field. Our kids matched up with them athletically, and, and we were very impressed with that. So, but you know, they got they got to get better. You know, we're we're going to play some great teams down the road here. You know, in in the pack, and we're also going to play some great teams in the districts if we make it. So, uh, you know. We're, 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 we've got to get better. They know that. They watch film with us, and they, they know what they have to do. And uh, if we don't do it, we're in trouble. Okay. Now, Chad, you obviously got a big game this week at Exeter. Uh, as you mentioned, 2-2 two and two looks a whole lot better than 1-3. and three. Um, I mean, are, are the players uh, feeling that same sense of urgency now? You said there are a lot of young kids. you got a whole new defense, 11 new starters, which is, is really a rare situation. That, that's how many good seniors you had the past couple of years. But... Uh, you know, what's your, what's your outlook on that and, of course, your, your divisional play? Well, you know, it's, I think every coach is saying right now you just have to keep getting better each week. Um, you know, and actually in 2011, we replaced all but one starter. Ryan Conway was the only one, and we won. We went 11-1. and one. But, uh, you know, I, I think that um, it, it's, we, just have to, we just have to continue to get better. There's a lot of different things. In the first two games, kids were thinking, not reacting, not playing, not very physical, not playing enthusiastically. Um, and that changed a little bit. We took some steps in the right direction on Friday night. So we just have to continue to take those steps. Obviously, we rely on TJ a lot. You know, TJ's basically, I'm giving him the, the overview of what we're trying to do on each play. And, and he's basically calling it on the line. And he has a lot of, a lot of leeway. Um, and what and how that play ultimately looks. And uh, we're relying on him. I mean, he's, he's one of the guys, you know, we only had three back on offense, mm -hmm. really. Um, so uh, we're relying a lot on him. And coming into the year against Unionville, not one of our receivers had a varsity catch. Um, so now that's changed. And, and now, so now the bar's higher for all those guys as well. So. It's just one of those things where we just got to keep plugging away at it and, and putting guys in different spots and, and uh, continuing to focus on, you know, we need to tackle better. I think Coach Mick, Senior, yeah, yeah. Coach Mick Senior said it. He was at our game, and obviously three plays were the difference in the game, and all three plays we had about four or five missed tackles. So it's pretty good running back, right, but still right, yep. we were there. So. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and wish you all the best uh, for the rest of the season. I'm sure we'll get on the, get you on again with uh, uh, one of your players or two. But I wanted to say, uh, ask uh, Coach Penny Packer down here. This is year 29, and uh, he keeps putting all this stuff out there that this might be the finale for you. Um, uh, I was just wondering if, if you had any comment on the fact that there's some rumors floating around that you might not make 30 years, that you're going to retire instead. And uh, you know, there's lots of, a lot of concern out there because uh, we certainly would like to see you trading on that sideline. Well, there's, there's a lady watching me sitting in my living room right now, and uh, she's got a lot to say about it. Um, <laughs> I, we'll make that decision at the end of the year, Dave. You know, this is my 41st year of coaching, 29 at Pottsgrove, but I've been doing it for 41 years. And, you know, uh, it, I'm getting to the point now where um, – I still love it. I still love the kids. I love everything about it. But, you know, I, I want to have some 
time and money to, and, and be able to do that. Have sometimes had time, sometimes had money, but I never had the same. Now I got, I'm at the age now where my kids are out, they're gone, the weddings are over with, you know, and um, it's time for me maybe to take a little bit of time. My wife and I have some fun. So, but I'll make that decision when it, when it, when it becomes. Well, it if, uh, if it does any good, uh, we would love to see you on there for a few uh, more years anyway. Right yeah. she's a, I'm guaranteed she's watching. Well, she'll and, be, and I'll tell you what, she's a, she's, a big re, she's a big reason why you've had so much success, yes, too. She you is, know, she without, is, without she that uh, support from home, you don't have the jobs that you do, that's for sure. But I want to thank Rick Pennypacker again in his 29th year from Potsgrove and, and Chad Brubaker in his eighth year at Spring Ford for stopping by. Guys, again, best of luck the rest of the season. And I'm sure we'll run into you sometime soon. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. We got a couple uh, new people want to jump on board. We got a special guest from the former Washington Redskin number 52, I think is what he wore, in, in, uh, on deck too. So we're going to mic those guys up and we'll be back with more right here live from Doc, uh, Doc uh, Irish Pub here in Boyertown on the Vallejo Sun Insurance Monday morning quarterback. Monday morning quarterback right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Golf Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Key Bank, the official bank of the Monday morning quarterback. We're back here live at Doc's Irish Pub, right next to legendary Zerns on Philadelphia Avenue in Boyertown. Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback show. I'm Dave Ridenauer, joined by my buddy, the longtime dynamic duo, Joe C. in the house. Joseph, What's up, always good to see you. And of course, uh, 
my old buddy from the Phoenixville area, University of Maryland, and Washington Redskin, Neil Okowitz. Neil, thanks for stopping by. My and pleasure, it's Dave. It's always, usual. it's always great to see you. And, of course, you brought the boss along with you there. They always have. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Keep absolutely. Keep you in line is he, right. He's not like Rick. No, <laughs> no, Rick. Yeah. She's at home watching. <laughs> She's no. critiquing. Rick's here <laughs> yeah, in person. Right. Right. And Ann's at home and watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, One thing, do I do got to say to you, though, I got to laugh. Your wife is more worried about this fantasy stuff than she is anything else. And I'm thinking, I hope you didn't jump into that too, did you? Yeah, I did. Oh, She's my very God, competitive Neil. Too. Oh, I can't believe it. She was in there yelling at Aaron Rodgers football. the other night. I know. She put I had a to post, get out of the house. She put a post on, uh, <laughs> on Facebook about, hey, Aaron, you can throw a long touchdown every now and again too, right? And I'm laughing. Oh, my God. I hope she didn't suck you into fantasy too. She did. I refuse to get in. I refuse Actually, to get I'm in. I'm watching the uh, New Orleans Minnesota <laughs> game. I got free pieces by quarterback. We'll go over to the bar and watch it <laughs> Neil and I are talking. <laughs> it's always great to see you, Joe. Here we are on the senior uh, uh, season premiere of our show at, at the docks in, in uh, Boyertown. It's always a lot of fun. We've got a beautiful night um, for, for what we're doing here. And again, it was great to see Chad Brubaker, Rick Pennypacker uh, doing a great jobs again in their prospective school. Well, let's talk a little bit about yesterday. All I right. know you're sort of torn because obviously he's an, uh, an ex-Washington Redskin, and, uh, but it's sort of an Eagles fan now. Uh, give us uh, your observations from yesterday. Really, it was a good game. A little sloppy with the first game, but uh, I thought the Eagles did a nice job jumping out front. I was a little surprised they didn't run LeGarrette Blunt a little more there uh, before Wentz threw his interception. But, you know, it was just one of the things. The guy tipped the ball and went right to him. Uh, Redskins, they've been struggling for a while with Cousins all preseason. I thought maybe they'd be able to turn it on when the season started, but uh, they, they're just a little off, you know, and uh, Eagles took advantage of it. Played uh, better as the game went on, I thought, too, and uh, came away. The, the call at the end was a little disputed, but still, I really didn't get the feeling that the Redskins were good down to yeah, score, I, you know. Yeah, they didn't really have a big I, I think the Eagles deserved it. They really did. Yeah. And I thought they might blow them out at one point, right? Well, you know, I, I, Kirk Cousins has been such a, an interesting situation, and, you know, you certainly know more about it than I and, and Joe, and, and they just keep putting that franchise tag on franchise tag on them. I can't quite figure out. I mean, they don't they, – they want him or don't they want him or what what do you get to I think they there? want to keep the pressure on him you know it seems like he kind of responded it takes him like a few games each year to get going and I think they just want to kind of keep the hammer down on him and and see how he performs because they're probably not sure themselves you know he he comes on and does well for a while but it, it takes him a while to get to that point you know Joe what did you think of uh of Cousins yesterday I, I without you, Pierre Garcon without well, Jackson that's what I was just going to say you know you lose two guys like that and you know now you look at Pierre Garcon. He's in San Fran, and he's like their number one receiver. Yeah. Well, you lose two guys like that, and the chemistry. And you get Terrell Pryor, who's a great athlete. You know, he's he did real well last year in Cleveland. But you know what? That chemistry's not there. And even uh, on the way up tonight, listening to Brandon Graham talk about it, and he said he just didn't feel like Cousins had any like mojo going at all the whole game. And they kind of felt at any point that they were just going to you know put him out of his misery yeah. and then right at the end with the, the sack and then Fletcher Cox picks up the ball but it, but what uh, I noticed and I want to go to the other or the other side with uh, Carson Wentz I noticed his release is a lot quicker and he's looked like he's throwing the ball a lot sharper that's what I noticed right off I was start. really impressed with, with Carson Wentz especially his uh, mobility when he got away from, oh, yeah. from the guys yeah, yeah. made some real big plays from I didn't realize he was that good. That and happened. Aguilar caught a touchdown pass, yeah. which was unbelievable. That might have been his game I of the year. We yelled more after that than we've <laughs> he, yelled in a lot of times. I, he looked really fast to me. He, he did look fast. He looked really fast. And, uh, I think was, he got new gloves, though. I think uh, he got uh, stickier uh, gloves. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's thir the 13 instead of 17. <laughs> yeah, right. But, um, you know, the thing was is, uh, with the scrambling is that they actually have a drill. I actually heard them talking about oh, yeah. it this well, morning. They've done that, they have yeah. a drill where they actually practice that right. where he scrambles. And where they go. And they're saying that he actually throws better yeah. going to his left. Yeah, it really seems that way. Cause they, well, I think place. it really concentrates and gets those shoulders square yeah. to turn there. Now, I wanted to ask you this, Neil. Uh, you know, this, this whole preseason has me upset. You know, no one's allowed to play in the preseason. They're all afraid of getting yes. hurt. They show up the first two games of the year, and you talk about knocking the rust off. They're sloppy. Yeah. You know, they don't have – I mean, there's no preseason football for the starters of the club. I mean, what, I mean, back in our day, 
and I didn't play professional, but I played through college. We practiced, and we practiced hard, and then we were ready for our first game. I mean, how do you look at that now? Yeah, I, I agree. It's got to be hard because then during the season, they, they don't really don't do anything, you know, other than conditioning-wise. And uh, it's hard to turn it on and off. I, I you know, I realize they don't want to guy, get guys hurt, and uh, but – at some point, you've got to kind of just take it. And, and some guys are going to get hurt regardless. Right. And that's have people that can replace them. Well, you know, it's funny because, Joe, I mean, we see a lot of guys that get hurt that are non-contact injuries. You know, we saw Darby yesterday. You know, I mean, that was bad looking. Oh, God. I mean, you saw his ankle. wasn't doing good. And uh, I think the wide receiver from Penn State is now at the Jaguars. He tore his ACL, yeah. run into the sidelines. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. so you're seeing a lot more guys get hurt without the contact. Well, you though. got like Danny Woodhead going down with a hamstring and things like that. And that was one of the questions I'm glad you brought up. That was going to ask Neil. I, I'm, when you played preseason, um, you had how many games when you were playing? Four. Four games, but you played. Oh yeah, you played, right? Yeah. Maybe you didn't play the first game so much because they wanted to see some of the rookies. But like that second, you got in. Third, you played. Fourth game, you played the whole game, right. or or at least three quarters yeah. of the yeah, game. Yeah, usually it was like two quarters, three quarters, mm-hmm. and then the last game wasn't as much. But but it was kind of get in shape, you get you ready, so get you your game ready. ready. Yeah, game ready. Because yeah, we all we all know you're in practice. Was you know I, I didn't play professionally or, or in school, but. Um, you know, you, you play at a certain speed. And then once you get into game speed, game time, it that speed is just so much quicker. And, you know, I, I, I agree with Dave, and I'm sure you agree. You guys, got, you got, they got to play. They got to play. The, even with the contact, yeah. even getting hit. There, there's you know? no way you can't Practice it, really. is, so, is totally different than game speed. Oh, yeah, speed, game, game everything's magnified. Everything happens quicker. It, uh, you know, you have to react split second. Even, even in the game yesterday, and I don't know who the announcer was, but the Rams were up 46 to 6 or 46 to 7, whatever the Rams were up. And Goff was still in there. And well, I he thought, needs to be. And I, I said, mean, no, and, and, no. And, and, and not only that, but I thought it was good they were still in there. Yeah. Get that repetition yeah, and sure. that motor Absolutely. for the motor Well, that's what I said. I mean, even Carson Wentz, I mean, he, he played at North Dakota State, you know, which is a one double A school. And, and was thrown in there as a first-year player, and they act like he's a Bard Star playing with the Green Bay Packers exactly. for 15 years. <laughs> he needs reps. He needs to see the different defenses and all those things. And that's really been a bugaboo of mine for a while. Let's look at the NFC East, Neil. Uh, obviously, right now it's only week number one. The Eagles and Cowboys are at one and zero, and the Giants and 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 the Skins are at zero and one. Uh, the Cowboys, again, appear to be a pretty solid squad, and if Elliott's going to be able to play all year, that's really going to help them. Yeah, they do look solid. Uh, Giants really got a good defense, but they Their really didn't have much line, chance, yeah, chance to get them. Uh, they're so solid. Um, yeah, they're going to be the team to beat, assuming nobody gets hurt real bad. And now, like you said, Ezekiel's uh, full year. Yeah, I know. Went from zero to zero. I know. <laughs> zero to hundred. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, really. So. I mean, it's it's crazy, and, and I I don't I don't even want to start that conversation <laughs> because that's almost for the whole show. But yeah. but they they are solid. And, and Joe, the thing I was impressed with yesterday was was Dallas's defense. I really like Sean Lee. I, I think he's a, a really good player. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you as a linebacker like to watch him as well, Neil. But he's like a, another coach on the field. But when he's healthy. Their defense is we, solid. We talked about him last year a yeah. lot, quite a yeah. bit. Uh, and you know what? It, it's not only like that. I, you know what I didn't realize? Uh, Cole Beasley was the leading receiver yeah, yeah, last yeah. year. Yeah. And I was I was like stunned. I was God. stunned. You can't cover I was him. stunned. But looking at, uh, looking at the Giants, looking at the Giants, and you look at Eli Manning, and without Beckham, oh yeah, they're, they're lost. without without uh, Victor Cruz, and I know he's hurt a lot last year. Uh, Sterling Shepard's not going to carry that team, no, and they're no. saying all the stuff about well, Brandon Ingram. Marshall. I think is going to be a bust too. I, yeah, I'm not, I, you know what? I, a little long in the tooth. Correct, he yes. Probably get hurt anyway. His, yeah. his uh, streak of catches, yeah. consecutive games, was broken last yeah, night. Yeah. They tried to throw him a pass right there. Yeah, I know. Game, and, I and he was still like, missed the He still yeah, missed it. Was it. I, it was. Uh, so you were impressed with Wentz yesterday. He was 26 for 39 for 307. Uh, he did throw one pick, but he he certainly played well enough. Uh, Jason Peters, a little bump, you know, I don't know if he's going to be able to last the whole year. You talk about getting a little long in the tooth. 
he's going to be tough to, to fill in for the whole year. Yeah, I know. And it's when they lost their cornerback, too. I, yeah, I, Darby, I thought the Redskins yeah. might have a chance with that, right. but they, they shut it down. Uh, and I think they played even better, actually. Okay. All right, well, listen, we're going to take a quick timeout. We're going, when we come back, we have our game ball. We have by the numbers. We got a, a five-pack picks. We have all kinds of things coming up here. A lot of fun with uh, old number 52 here, Neil Wolkowitz, and, of course, my buddy in the dynamic deal, Joe C. We'll be back with more right after this. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Blahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs, to the friendly Doc service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Hey, back here live at Doc's Irish Pub in Boyertown, PA. Our season premiere of the Vallahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback, joined by my buddy, part of the dynamic duo, Joe C. And of course, our special guest, it's always great to talk to Neil Olkowitz uh, as well. You know, guys, uh, each week uh, we give a game ball, and, and this year is certainly no different. My buddy Paul Strauss from the styling room is uh, the sponsor of that. And I was just over there to see Paul last week, and he's doing much better. Had a little scare with his health, but he's doing real well, so we keep our fingers crossed and some prayers for Paul. But, again, he's been with us for a long, long time. Joseph, I'm going to give you honors of going first today for the game ball. Uh, you know what we were talking about? I said I was going to give mine to Sean McVay for uh, the, the head coach, the uh, First year head coach at the Rams. Rams yeah. well, I think I'm going to go uh, Kamir Hunt. I'm going to go uh, the Kansas City Chiefs guy. And the funny story well, is we were talking about my notes. <laughs> no, no. You are. We're talking about my notes again. Honestly, God, I, I, this I, is I, like 10th grade algebra <laughs> class. You're looking at my no, paper. I, it just dawned on me because the game was on Thursday. But the funny story was is that we were talking about fantasy football. So my daughter, who's in Tampa, she actually came home and she's at home. She's home now. But, um, um, she was in a fantasy draft, and she's like, I need a running back. I need a running back. So I'm like, take Kamir Hunt, Kansas City. Take Kamir Hunt. And she took somebody else. I forget who it was. So actually, yesterday when she came home, we were joking about it. I said, look, I still have the text that I, you got to listen to your father when your father tells you to do something. Because she's like, how about Kamir Hunt? Because he had like 40-some 40, 40 points <laughs> fantasy. 
So I'm giving my game ball to Kamir Hunt, Kansas right. City. Boy. Okay. Uh, Kansas City. Neil, what do you got? That's a good one, but I got to go with Carson Wentz. I, I was a little leery of him coming in. You know, I thought he was a little cocky for a guy that's only been here for two years. But uh, he, he really proved to me, like I said, his escapability, the way he moved around, made some big plays. Uh, you know, when it counted, they won. And uh, I, I think he's got a good future. I think he does, too. And, and, again, they talk about extending the play. He certainly is that. And I heard a guy call him a poor man, Aaron Rodgers, today. I got a little chuckle out of that. I'm not ready to put him in Aaron Rodgers' <laughs> category yet. But maybe I'm someday. Right. Yeah, maybe someday. Sure. And, and, again, Joe was looking at my notes. I'm giving my <laughs> game ball to Mel <laughs> Kuyper, Jr. Oh. Mel Kuyper, Jr., the, the draft guru yeah. who kept promoting Kareem Hunt from – Akron or Ohio U or one of those smaller yeah, schools yeah, in there yeah. and he kept saying that all these teams are missing out on him missing out on him they should have taken Kareem Hunt and he was on him and uh, I remember because I love that draft stuff you know how I watch that yeah, stuff yeah. and uh, Mel Kuyper Jr. predicted this guy was going to be a heck of a player and, and I mean he, he, he blew it out 148 yards rushing and two touchdowns 98 yards pass catching and another touchdown for almost 250 yards total yeah, which yeah. you are right yeah. about but and he uh, did it after fumbling on the first yeah, play exactly. too. Yeah. Yeah. first time first he ever fumbled, yeah. never fumbled a ball yeah. in college yeah. that's great speaking of college how about your terrapins yeah, the huh? are looking good man we're looking forward to penn state i know oh my day. gosh man they're, <laughs> they're licking their chops for the Nittany lions again but man i'll tell you they got some weapons too they do uh, it's just, they're amazing me actually <laughs> yeah and I, I can only picture you in one of those uh, crazy uh uniforms <laughs> Forms there with have to wear the so turtle outfit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, the the Under Armour guy would hook you up and, yeah. and make sure you had a, a great uniform for that. But it, it, it's crazy. And and we also do a, a little feature here called By the Numbers. I want to thank uh, my buddy Jack Reesmer again, who is on board. He is my accountant and financial guy. He's right down the road here in Boyertown, right next to Seville's, actually. Give him a call if you want some help with uh, your taxes or any kind of financial information. But I just told these guys, believe it or not, Joe Thomas, and I certainly do not want to put the, the jinx on him, Joe Thomas, left offensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns, has played every snap since his rookie year. Four more to go. It's going to be 10,000 consecutive snaps. He has never come out of a game. He has never missed a practice or anything. That's amazing. And that's, I mean, that and you amazing. played, and you didn't miss a lot, Neil. No, but, but that, that, that 10, is amazing. 000, that's that's holy uh, smoke. superhuman, that's, really. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. that is crazy. For an offensive tackle. So. taking a beating every yeah. Like, yeah. That's like you oh, got bad teams, yeah, too. You know? too. How easy is that to say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're getting like, beat again. We're 1-15. For sure. Yeah. And that's a credit to Joe Thomas and what he's been able to do. Well, you know, the, the Eagles are, are hanging in there. I was going to ask if there's anything else that happened shocking uh, over the first week. Obviously, New England getting handled like they did. Uh, Tom Brady obviously wasn't happy. He said there was a, a lack of preparation, sense of urgency within the locker room. He was a little upset. Anything uh, sort of uh, unusual or interesting to you that first week? I think, to me, Jacksonville Jaguars uh, beating Houston so badly. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. They uh, controlled them and, and beat them up, too. The yeah, guys, yeah. Were, yeah. guys were go, going off. Well, I said I had Kalei Campbell down here as a backup. He had four sacks as, as a new guy on, on Jacksonville's team. And Blake Bortles has been, you know, he's been ridiculed and, and hammered for a couple of years now. He was efficient, didn't do great. I guess Leonard Fournette is going to help him. Joe. He's going, Yeah, he's going to be a, an added uh, plus for them because, you know, T.J. Yeldon from uh, last year from Alabama, he didn't really do it. But what I noticed with Fournette and watching him yesterday was, especially after his first few carries, he would get up and get right in oh, yeah, the attitude, guy's faces. Attitude. Oh, yeah. And I, I attitude. like that. And then, you know, we talk about the defense was really good. They really stood out. Bortles, I'm not that big of a fan. I, but here, here we go. We, we talk about him losing Robinson, right? And then let's talk about Brady losing Edelman. That's a big. That's a yeah, big. Is. That's like your 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 blanket, right. your security oh, yeah. blanket, yeah, exactly. your yeah. whoopie. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you're trouble, so when you're ahead. in trouble. I mean, and and you know Edelman. Edelman was crazy. He was, yeah. was kind of oh, yeah. like uh, Wes Welker. Yeah. Oh, and when yeah. you lose somebody like that, it takes time to make the adjustment and they get comfortable with somebody else. So I think that's what's going on. Don't tell me that Brady's 40 and he's done because that's I not going to happen. No, no, that's no, not no, going to happen. No, no, that's, that's not going to be that way. All right, well, listen, I think we have one more timeout break. Uh, we're going to take our last timeout break. When we come back, we got our, our five-pack picks, and we got some final thoughts from our two guys here on the Vlahos Done Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. We'll be right back.
tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Blahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats! It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service, Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Key Bank, the official bank of the Monday Morning Quarterback. Hey, we're back live at Doc's Irish Pub here in Boyertown on the season premiere of the Valajos Dunn Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback. Dave Ryan, now Joe C, and of course our special guest, uh, <coughs> young number 52, <laughs> Neil <you>. Olkowitz. <laughs> we found a fountain of youth in them either. Uh, absolutely. Well, I said, you're a lot younger now than you're roaming the whole of the kept going now. old number 52, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, bud, he's in great shape. You better know, watch I, I figured maybe he was walking those halls of Potsgrove now. You know, he's know. He looks like he's been rejuvenated. rejuvenated. He looks like right. he's pumping some iron. I, I said I told Neil a funny story. We both go to Planet Fitness, and, and I was talking to a couple older guys that I know, and I said, hey, do you know there's an old Washington Redskin over here works out here? I said, really? Show me who is it. Oh, he's not here right now, but I'll point him out to you. He don't work out too much. I, I thought they'd be like, hey, look at that old Washington Redskin guy. Right, young right. Washington Redskin guy working out. I know. And, and you're talking. just standing here talking. talking. That's right. I'm talking. I'm on the treadmill. Uh, I'm all right, buddy. All right. All right. Good, it's good all boy. good. It's all good. Well, listen, you know, it's it's amazing. We're only in week number one, and it's, it's just so much fun again. And uh, I was really excited about the college game, too. I know you're still a big fan, Neil. A couple big games uh, early on, and, and uh, the Pitt-Penn State game certainly was one that a lot of people had some interest in. Penn State appears to be uh, on, on the road for, for a good season again. Uh, uh, what do you think about the Nits? Uh, I gotta, I'm impressed with the Nits. They really, actually last year even, they, yeah. they weren't supposed to be that good. It came yeah. on last year, we're good. And uh, and Pitt kept them out of getting into the Final Four, yeah, really, yeah. you know, with that they're, upset. They're uh, a potent team. They yeah. really are. Yeah, I tell you, Barkley looks good, and, uh, and Trace McSorley is a, certainly a very, very good and, college quarterback. And they have and, another kid right behind him yeah. that's, uh, that could actually push yeah. him, so they have yeah. a little security blanket. Well, they're but getting I, more depth now. Right, you know. exactly. And Franklin is, is, is a good coach. He, he was thrown into that position, but you know what? They're buying into it, obviously. But the Barkley's going to be a candidate for the Heisman Trophy, um, and um, you know what? The kid from uh, Oklahoma. Oh, uh, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Yeah, Mayfield. Yeah. Oh, Did you see that when he, oh, that yeah. he took well, the he flag? Took the flag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But he yeah. apologized today. He said, hey, "I meant dis no disrespect." No, he said, no, "I got all got caught that. up in the emotion see, of yeah, the I didn't win. take it. Yeah, I didn't take it that way. I took it as he was just. Yeah, it's all good. That's part of the good stuff." 
All right, guys, well, listen, we do a five-pack pick each week, and uh, last year I had a pretty good year. Joe normally gets his upper, upper hand on me, but last year he, he had a bad year. You were, in, you were in a little bit of a slump last year. <laughs> I, I, I. You know what's funny? I, I said you, know you usually funny? do well. You know what's funny? Three years ago, I, I wiped the floor with you. I, you I forgot was like, that. Yeah. And you that. didn't say one word about that. records I don't remember or that how one. anybody did. I now, all of a sudden, you're, he you, burned did the good. Film. you did good. That's, that's right. like the there, highlight of the no show. Evidence of that that's anywhere. the highlight. There Before no you evidence. even get started, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, Joe C. did really horrible. <laughs> I love coming here. I love coming here. <laughs> all right. We got tonight's game, Saints in Minnesota. Uh, of course, it, it's probably going as, as we speak now. but certainly was three right now. Okay. Right. It was interesting because obviously Adrian Peterson uh, coming back coming to home. play Minnesota for the Saints. Drew Brees certainly is a guy who's uh, been a solid guy. Neil, we'll start with you. Who do you like in that one? I got to go Saints. Okay. So I'm going to give you a check I'm so we we'll know who you are. I'm going to go Saints as well. Okay. I'm going to you know, give you a You know, only a four home star. teams won yesterday. No. Only four home teams won. Every road, wow. every other uh, team that won was a road team. I'm going to go against you guys. I'll take the Vikings at home. Uh, my man, Sammy Sleeves, or whatever his name is. Sam Bradford? Yeah, Sammy yeah. Sleeves. That's Sammy what they call Sleeves. Him. Sammy Sleeves, they call him. All right. Hey, now all of a sudden, a pretty good game. Tennessee, although they lost the first week. And your Jacksonville squad, uh, I think that's a Thursday night game. Uh, sounds like a pretty good one. Uh, what do you think about uh, Tennessee at Jacksonville? Joe, I'll well, let you I'm, go first. I'm going to take Jacksonville. I agree with Neil. He, he brought up a good point on how good their defense is. And uh, you know what? I, I like Jacksonville this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll go Jacksonville too. Right. They, they run the ball a lot, control the game, and should be a good game, but I'll go Jacksonville. All right, I'm going to go opposite. I'm going to go Tennessee. I don't think they can start 0 2. Marcus Mariota on, on a bounce back week uh, to get his guys fired up. All right, here's a big one now Dallas and Denver. Dallas travels to Denver. Um, Dallas 1 0, Denver yet to play. They play tonight late. Um, I'll go first. I'm going to take the Cowboys. I think they're going to win again. I, I think they're going to be a good team this year. I can never take the Cowboys. I know you can't. I know uh, you can't. I know. Go Broncos. Okay. Joe? No Clint Longley? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take the Cowboys as well. See that? Uh, it's all about the W. Yeah, the quarterback in quarterback in, quarterback <laughs> in, in, <laughs> quarterback in Denver. <laughs> yeah, uh, guy. Yeah, all right. about hey, now all of a sudden, we got Green Bay and Atlanta. You got two gunslingers there. You have Aaron Rodgers. Your, your wife's guy there, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Hopefully he throws some touchdowns. She'll be yelling at him. Yeah, she'll be yelling at him. <laughs> Where's that at, Dave? It's at Matty Ice, at Atlanta. At Atlanta. At Atlanta. Uh, Neil, you're up first this time. I got to go to Pack. I was impressed with their defense, too. I mean, okay. I, everybody knows about Aaron and the offense, but their defense looked good. Yeah, they did. Their secondary looked a lot better. Yeah. I know they had a lot of injuries yeah. last year. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Joseph? if, if uh, it wasn't for three drop passes for uh, Mike Lennon right at the end of that game, uh, Chicago should have beat I know, Atlanta. I know, I know. Um, and they might have been looking ahead. Who yeah, knows? but I, I want to take Atlanta at okay. home. Okay. Green Bay off a win, and, and Atlanta should have lost that game. I'll take Atlanta at home. I And I'm not a big Matty Ice fan either, but I'm going to take them at home too, Joe. I'm going to go with you on that one. I'm going to take Atlanta. We'll go against Neil. And now we got the big one at the end there, Eagles at Kansas City. Joseph, you're you're up first on that I'll one. I'll tell you what, Kansas City looked really good, really good, and it's at KC. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Kansas City. Oh. I'm gonna take Kansas City. Second second week in a row, the Eagles are on the road, and uh, I think Andy Reid is gonna have them pumped up. And Peterson's not going to be able to pump up the Eagles like Andy Reid's going to be able to pump Neil? up. Neil? I got to go in in KC. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm going the other way. I'm going to Eagles. I'm all going right. E-A-G-L-E-S. <laughs> We're all those Eagles fans out there. I mean, I know I did the, the bad thing by taking the Cowboys, but I got to go with my Eagles. I actually do think they got a good shot to win. I think Kansas City's going to come down a little bit after their big win at New England and spanking uh, Tommy uh, Brady and his gang around a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, hey, look, we got about five minutes left. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Joe? Anything that uh, is your, your fancy uh, about the, the, the pro game? I mean, how, let's assess Peterson. Now that we're going, thinking okay. about, all right, they're going out there to play Kansas City. You know, his uh, his mentor was Andy Reid, and he, he seems to call a lot of things like Andy, which is not always good. Uh, assess I, I think I him. think uh, he has a better hold on uh, a better hold on the team this year than he did last year. I think coming in, it was kind of things that were kind of new to him. He wasn't sure of. I think he, he's a better adjusted. Plus the fact that he's had some time to spend with 
with Schwartz and, and Frank Reich. And I think that's helped them. And I think that's going to show, especially the maturity of Carson Wentz. With taking, and I was a little nervous about Jordan Matthews leaving. I thought that was going to be a, be a problem. But it seems like there's a chemistry. There's a, a leadership that is more so, I feel it more. I don't necessarily see it so much. But I feel more than I did last year. Okay, how, yeah. how what do you think? Yeah, it seems like they got a lot of weapons with Alshon Jeffrey and you know Ertz, and I, I think I think they got a good shot. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. Ertz again was uh, eight for eight targets and catches, uh, but he's still yet to break a tackle, Joe. I want to see it some yards <laughs> after contact after <laughs> like Zach Ertz. Like um, Bennett yesterday. Oh, yeah, did, yeah, you yeah. Ben, did you see? Did you see Bennett? I'm sorry, going off, but did you see Bennett going after? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The guy when he, he hit Seattle guy. He was yeah. a Seattle guy yeah. when he hit Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And Rodgers yeah. just went up to him and was like, Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. yeah. yeah I liked yeah. it. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting, and again, I think it's going to be a big game. It's certainly not a do-or-die game for the Eagles, but I, I think it's going to be a little bit of a, uh, a yardstick, a measuring stick, if you will, to see how they can play two weeks in a row on the road in a hostile environment. They say that's tough play. Have you, have you ever played in Kansas City? No, that was one of the few places I hadn't played at. Uh, mm -hmm. We played them up in our spot, but yeah, never down there. Never down there. Cause they say it's really a, a great spot, a great venue, and they have all the ribs going, and everybody's having a fun time and, and stuff like that, so it's it's actually a, a big time event. You know, I, I mentioned the fact that uh, the Hall of Fame class would be coming out as well to change the subject a little bit. And one of your guys, Rick Kraniak, a uh, guy who sort of succeeded you at Phoenixville, a little linebacker. Good to hear another back Phoenix and, soil linebacker yeah, you. Yeah, going, uh, <laughs> going to be getting inducted. That'll be October the 14th at the Sunnybrook Ballroom. We'll have uh, 10 guys, also Andre uh, Thunder Thornton. Uh, of Phoenixville guys, so that'll be getting released in the paper in the next couple of days as well. So we're looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing you guys again. But I want to thank everybody who stopped by, all our friends and new friends and, and fans of the show, and I want to thank them all for stopping by to uh, Docs. I want to thank Shelly and the girls back there, Erica. Make sure you don't forget your bartenders and servers. Take good care of them. Joseph, thank you again. I'll see, see you in Dave. two weeks. Uh, Neil, we'll be back in the studio. Yeah. Neil, always a pleasure to see you. And again, I want to thank all the guys, Steve and everybody here at Docs, for having us here for our season premiere. I'm Dave Ryan now, the Monday Morning Quarterback. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Hey, actually, we'll be at the Colebrookdale Railroad next week. We're going to be on location again. So if you're in the area, stop on by. See you next week.